Welcome to this Showbox 2020 digital event and the first ever show digital festival, Showbox Festival. Um, together with Performing Arts Hub Norway and Geir Lindahl, uh, Showbox are trying this year to connect artists and programmers that work with performing arts for a young audience throughout the world. Um, and today we have invited four companies that was supposed to play at our festival had, had it gone live. Uh, and Catherine Carroll from Vancouver International Children's Festival will lead us through this conversation. So uh, Catherine, the word is yours. Thank you so much and welcome everybody. And it's such a delight to be here. And I don't know all of the company's work, although I've watched all of it on uh, video and some of, some of you I've seen live. I'm so excited to have this conversation and learn from you and discover what it is that um, lights you up to make you do the work that you do. So uh, let's begin by you were taking just a, a moment to introduce your companies so that we, uh, our audience know who the companies are and, and a little bit about you. Okay, I can start. Um, my name is Sudesh Adhana and I'm a dancer and choreographer based in Oslo. And for the last four, 14 years, I have been living in Oslo, but before that I was born and raised in India in a village. So my dance, my wish to learn dance and to pursue dance took me to Norway and, and I'm still doing that and I keep doing it. And this is, this is my joy of life, which keeps me happy and yeah, satisfied in life. Fabulous, thank you, Sudesh. If you'd like to go next. I can I, I, go next. Okay. <laughs> My name is uh, Christine Myre Thunheim and um, I work in Rundtrost uh, Produktioner, who is uh, which I um, I run together with the uh, uh, with the four other people, uh, three other people. We're four together, yeah. And uh, I'm an actor, and so I it's the actor actor's way into. Uh, theater and uh, we make kind of traditional performing uh, performances in the in the form but uh, try to um, use themes that are not that um, that are not uh, researched that much and um, yeah hmm, that's me <laughs> great thank you Sebastian yeah hi I'm Sebastian I'm a dancer and I work in the group called Balance, which is from Mende Productions. Uh, I work with Nastir, who is the pro, who is the choreographer, and we do dance for children. And we made this uh, show called Balance, yeah, that we are very proud of, and yeah, that's us. Great, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Anna, and I'm the artistic director of uh, Pantarei Danse Teater. Um, we are a dance theater company that uh, predominantly um, compose or create work um, for touring. Uh, that's our core activity, but we are also really enjoying outreach work. Um, and also, if we can do large scale projects in local communities, that's some of our favorite activities. So that's us. Great, thank you so much. And thank you for being here. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw a couple of questions out and we're just gonna have a chat like we're, we're in a room together. One day that will happen again. Um, so I'd love to begin by um, finding out, I'm curious about what your influences are both within Norway and outside of Norway. Um, uh, yeah, just what influences you in the creation of your work? Um, I could start. Um, uh, uh, for me, I have been very occupied with the societies around around me, the, the present time in societies. And then when I take some issues from a society, then of course, I also do research about the past, like, because where we are, then I'm very interested how we reach here. Mm -hmm. uh, and what what initiated, which became a problem now, it must have been an act, which was very innocent act in the past which created a seed for then this, this action went even wrong and it became very wrong. And then the society reached to that point. So I tried to reach that place to bring back that what caused this whole reaction. 
So that's a, that's a way I kind of work with things, but then I also take things which are easy to work with because sometimes when I take critical, social critical issues, it's too heavy. And okay. those projects take maybe three years or four years of my time and they, they never leave me in a way. So then I also do like light works which are more colorful and which also give me more, just not very um, heavy baggage to carry because right. I also create my own work with research it sometimes can take too much from your life also. So then I try to balance that with much more like playful, easy things which have uh, the same information, but necessarily not criticizing on that big scale. So I try to, now these days, I try to balance. <laughs> so I'm not like tipping over to just being critical to everything because that, that affects me personally also very much. So I try to, because also living, working with your body, being an artist, and then also living, this act of balancing is, is also very, very important for me. So I'm trying to work on that these days. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. I think today balance is a very big conversation for all of us, for sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, for us, like at the way me and Nasser created the balance is there's the journey between us meeting as dancers because we were like, I met in the, in the start of my artist life, I met Nasser. He had just started to do the ballet school in Oslo at Kiyo. And I was just decided to be a stand-up comedian or like a stage artist. But we did a show together on a, uh, in Vik, the theater boat for uh, Nordic Black Theater. And uh, we figured out that we would like to dance, you know, and then that we started dancing there. And then from there on, I was asked to do a big modern dance show about different bodies. And they needed a male strong dancer and Nasser is the strongest male dancer I know of. So I took him in and we did that show. And in that show, we had like a workshop for kids where they made the stage of the show. And then me and Nasser showed our duet for the kids. And it was so inspirational to see the kids reactions on like me and Nasser's interactions and how we actually danced as professionals. And we in a show and we could show them that I was also a dancer and we had created something together so when we started that we started to understand that we could have like a big impact on kids just dancing so mm -hmm. that's from from there on we used like i don't know two years developing balance and he choreographed and we went to studios and we worked 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 and then we did some shows for some kids and we tried it and we developed it so for us it's the inspiration our own journey as artists and to show that to the kids yeah and that balance in our lives can create something beautiful like and I can be on a professional level as him even right. yeah so for us that was like to just show yeah fabulous and Nasa would you like to add anything to that yeah yeah sure uh yeah but it was very interesting like uh how the kids reacted to like seeing us like uh performing for them Mm -hmm. so we kind of took that initiative like you know like uh and try to push like some more ideas about like bullying or like most most bullies are very insecure you know and or afraid so we are afraid of something new or to experience something different so we kind of wanted to just put that in perspective with the kids to say yeah, okay Sebastian yes he's handicapped but you can also talk to him he's also funny he's also full of life so don't be afraid of uh something you don't understand or you don't know, just try and understand it. And, and we try to prove that by dancing together and making that, finding that balance between movement and just try and create something that kids can be like, oh, he can do that. Oh, he can spin. Oh, he can run. Oh, he can, he's got jokes, you know, like just make him forget about like, you know, his physical form, like just take him as a person. And we wanted to spread that for kids also to do that amongst themselves when it comes to culture and all different things, you know, because in high school, like in Norway here, it's very multicultural. They're kids from very different places. So most of the times, you know, it, it takes time for them to kind of get into the society. And of course the society is a bit different. So it's good for them to just like try and like acknowledge each other and learn from each other and just not be afraid. Like, you no, know, there's always something nice coming out of like, you know, this type of differences. Yes, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, Anna? 
It's, um, it's really oh, nice yeah. just, uh, yeah. listening to yeah. everyone talking, I think. It's um, because one of the things that I find the most inspirational is, is listening and um, just um, trying to see what is current in society today, a little bit like Sudesh was saying, that staying current is really important to us. And we like to think of ourselves as good listeners in the company, and I hope we are, <laughs> yeah. uh, both in terms of uh, personal stories of all the artists that we work with, that's really important to us. Uh, but also when we go into local communities and we do outreach work, we're really interested in what uh, the people that we meet are interested in at any given time. So staying as good listeners, I think is maybe the most important thing we can do to stay current and stay important as, uh, as artists. So I would right. say maybe that is the, maybe the largest kind of uh, inspirational source that we have is to stay listening. And also um, most of our work is quite personal. So um, whatever we're working with at any given time comes from a, a personal, perspective and we we quite like to stay not intimate maybe but personal uh, in how we work so that's both taken into the artistic work and onto stage but also into what we do uh, alongside the artistic work so when we work with children or older people uh, we stay with the theme that is personal to us because we think that has a global interest because if right. it's something that has a, a personal a connection to us and the whole of the artistic te theme, we see that this is also something that interests uh, a larger audience. And that's quite important to us. Great, thank you. Kristin. Yeah, it's, it's uh, as you say, uh, Anna, it's very inspiring to listen to you guys because it's a lot of parallels the uh, as the last uh, thing you said there because um, of being personal and how that kind of uh, has a uh, makes it um, uh, relevant for a lot of people and and it i think that's uh, similar uh, to how our, our audience appears as well it's a kind of a personal seed but then we also were very um, uh, we want to listen uh, to make sure that uh, what we uh, engage ourselves in isn't something that's just I will go out and listen and talk to people and always um, almost always we have like interviews um, research interviews um, at the at the base of the production and then from there it can go into the uh, fiction uh, or into like um, we in Norway call documentary theater. I don't know what's the if that's the <laughs> documentary theater. If that's what you say in, in English, but yeah. Uh, so you can so we we move in different uh, directions with the material, but we kind of uh, we say in Norwegian we lift the for laga, which means like we listen before we make it. <laughs> it's yeah. And um, so, so that's um, uh, um, in, a, a big part of our inspiration as well. And also, um, as you say, Sudesh, with kind of being also in the um, presence and to to kind of see what what is moving in our world. Uh, so we we take uh, themes that in in some way um, can be. Um, kind of uh, experienced as taboo uh, or or not um, exposed that much in our uh, society and uh, to kind of I also um, the word you said Sebastian unsecure this bully bullying um, how uh, bullies are in, insecure and I think this uh, insecurity is a um, is a kind of root to a lot of um, misunderstanding that is unnecessary, kind of. So we want to go into these themes where there are these uh, um, insecurities, uh, uh, and uh, the thing I uh, kind of uh, where my fire is is to talk about the uh, gender. That's uh, what I really 
it, that's where my passion is um, uh, among others. So yeah, I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> yes, that absolutely made sense. And, and I'm curious with all of you, all of you, just from what you've shared, but also from what I've watched and read about you is the, the uh, umbrella of uh, diversity and inclusion, you all seem to work inside of that um, and, and address um, so many really important um, topics that we need to be addressed. And I'm curious about your choices to work in that. So I'm, I'm hearing that some of that comes from a personal place, but also about why you would want to bring that to the, the world for young audiences, um, because um, I'm just curious about what, what that means for you in bringing um, these personal stories and um, questioning and presenting ideas that, that are diverse and, and talking about inclusion, things like gender, race, uh, et cetera. So thoughts about that? I think it's because that's where the insecurity starts because we as adults often kind of project our own insecurity to the children uh, which uh, doesn't have it in in their uh, in their bodies or in their minds kind of but we it, um, as uh, yeah we, we we kind of project 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 it uh, and that's why i think it's important to to um kind of balance balance uh, uh, that and and to to um, take it away or talk about it and, and to have a safe experience together where it's a safe space to both ask question to to kind of um, explore uh, whatever theme it is uh, yeah and I, I also think that um, dance and performing arts play such an important important role in creating a healthy society mm. and um, I think we as artists has the tremendous responsibility to make sure that dance and performing arts stays relevant and is seen as important in society. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we go out into local communities, um, that's not always the case that people think that we are important. Right. And I think in order to do those projects that make them see the importance is um, my responsibility as an artist, and it's uh, all artists' responsibility in, in some way. I mean, there are a hundred different ways of doing it, so I don't think everyone should do it in the same way that we do. But I, I think to be aware of that responsibility and power that we have in order to play an important role in the world uh, is why we should stay inclusive, um, or at least that's the reason for us. Yeah. Right. As you can um, see, oh, sorry, I just feel very passionate about that part. <laughs> Absolutely, it's so important. That's why I'm curious to, yeah. to learn and hear your thoughts. Yes. Um, my experience working with children has been, I think, the reason why I've worked with children, of course, what Anna says and what Christine is also saying, it's very true. But also, like for me personally, like uh, they are really the very honest audience and they have not mm. learned the codes of behavior which the audience in theater have learned so they can say straight on to you and and they are not occupied with the overly conceptual ideas which we seem to create like in the museums or so i think it has been also the need of the art to go to the to the younger audience because they are somehow very connected to something which we start to forget over time because we start to become very uh, constructed in certain reality which we construct ourselves and we start to lock these constructions over ourselves but but these beings they are so kind of connected to the body and they are connected to somehow they do not have these uh, boundaries which we, we seem to put on ourselves right and that that honesty comes so so crashing it crashes my world every time I try to perform for them and, and, and I think I remember my first experience in 2012, I was asked to do first time like a children performance and I was very nervous. And um, I, we did everything. And then the first thing uh, the choreographer and the children were asking, why don't you smile? Because in the contemporary dance, we learn to be so serious. And this was a break, I, like ice breaking for me. Like, uh, yeah, it's, you can do like uh, serious things, but you can smile and put, mm. it, uh, put it on that platform. And 
And then I, I was so, so deeply surprised their capacity of, of receiving everything and understanding. I did a piece about, the, about sexual violence in India on the streets and there were always children in the first row. This was a show for made for basically for grown up and teenager men. And these children will sit and they will have their own commentary of the show. And you know, they will comment and they will understand about, the, about what we are doing and they will comment to each other and say, oh, these people are doing that. And this was, it was like really, for me, I really have to come out from this institutional, institutional dancer uh, or theater person to come to like reality and, and really, and I've learned so much. I think, honestly, I, I enjoy that so much. Just uh, for me, it's like, a, yeah, it's a playing ground where I learned so much working with them. Mm. That's fabulous. Thank you. And yeah. also, I, th I, th I think for me personally, me and Nasser, we like kids are the funniest audience and they're the, the on, honest, they're the most honest audience. Like it doesn't matter if we are with kids that are from the first grade to fourth grade or if we are with 15 year olds or if we are in special schools. I mean, the kids are the coolest audience ever and they will let you know what they feel, you know? I never felt like a superstar until I had like shows for kids. Until I had shows for kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think for us artists, we are very daring to go there. Like we, I think we show them a little sense of confidence. Like even your your imagination. You know, kids are very playful. They're very exploring all the time. It's good to just show them that yeah, as an artist, you can also be playful and. Uh, have a play and put it there and uh, make a story out of it and dare to just go out there and uh, be confident within yourself. It's it's nice to just see the kids be like, oh, I, I like the way you did that move. Can, you, can I try this? Can I, you know, and ask Sebastian, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? You know, you, you're giving them that confidence to opening up that door to, for them to ask whatever they want to feel like oh, they're laughing, they can laugh, you know, just and that's why that's why we also put the time for the kids to ask us questions after yeah. the shows because yeah. normally after a show for for grown ups they will just get up and leave the show you know <laughs> but like for us it's so important that they sit down and get to ask the questions that they have to us as performers and us as people mm -hmm. they always want to know how me and Nasa met and Mm. Like stuff, they, they, they see, we are first and first, we are people and then we are artists. So, and the children see that. And so to have a Q&A with them after the shows, I think it's yeah. so nice. Yes, definitely. Uh, one of the things that um, I've, I've only, um, I haven't seen a lot of work uh, from Norway, but I've seen some. And one of the, the big differences for me that I've noticed between uh, Norway and, and other parts of, of Europe, but, um, and and North America um, and America and Canada have different uh, sensibilities as well, but we're much more conservative in North America in terms of what we think children should be able to see thematically. And I feel like in Norway, you're, you're more adventurous in that way. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on what, on what kind of boundaries you think as artists you might need to have with children, or are there any? I'm curious on when you're making the work, what are you thinking about for the children? Are there topics that you that you think perhaps when you started doing the work was somewhat taboo and you've learned that actually that's not the case, it's how you present it. Um, so I'm just curious about that kind of creation process and what what is different for you perhaps when you're creating for children versus creating for an adult audience. I think I think for, for us, it's so much about how you contextualize the work. Yeah. Like it, like we can easily do some of the same work for young, a young audience as we do for, for an older audience, but it depends on how we contextualize it. So for instance, we did an experiment with a, a group of teenage boys where we um, showed them the work and then we worked with them for four weeks and created a choreography on the same group of boys. They, most of them had never danced before. Uh, they were footballers, uh, ice hockey players, um, <laughs> that kind of activities that they were doing. And then we showed the work again after four weeks and they showed their uh, piece as well in relation to our work. And one of the, uh, <laughs> of the boys came up to me after the show and said, Anna, why didn't you show me that work straight away? That was so much better than the first one. <laughs> and I said, well, it's exactly the same show. And it took me about five minutes to kind of convince him to believe in me. 
And that just proves, I think, that if you contextualize stuff in the right way, I think you can talk to children about the same themes um, on the same, um, well, with the same kind of wording as in movements and dance, but you need to contextualize it for, it, for them, I think, in some way. Um, so that's our experience is, is that. That's great. <laughs> And I also think that you have to kind of, um, uh, I agree in, in what uh, Anna says, but also kind of clean things up sometimes <laughs> because we have a, a kind of a tendency of, uh, or I can see, say for everyone, but, but me and a lot of adult, adults has a tendency to smash things together, to smash themes together to smash uh, gender and sex, for an instance. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the same. And, and I think you can talk uh, about sex as well with children. So it's not that, but you have to just kind of, this is this, this is this. Uh, because I think often we, we think that some theme has a kind of package <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. that, it does, that isn't true kind of. It's just a cultural or made, made up thing. If, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. Yes. And I, and I think in a way you need to be daring about these things as an audience uh, or no, as an artist as well. And I think that's our job to test those boundaries mm. a, a little bit, but of course be aware where those boundaries are so you don't um, yeah. go past something that's healthy, but you right. should test the boundaries, I think, a little bit. And right. also, all the time, of course, talk with the audience you want to uh, to um, be relevant for, as you said, Anna. To uh, we haven't done it uh, as thorough as you have with four weeks and stuff, but we all all the time we have children in, and to kind of in a safe uh, way uh, make conversation together, and and in this space you kind of feel where your boundaries is uh, yeah yeah I, I i think basically there are no for me there's no taboo to talk about children with anything but it's the way you talk to them about it like it's the it's it is the way you 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 make them because i think children are so <laughs> much more they, they understand so much more than we think but we have to give and we have to give them credit for that but then we also have to to show them. But like you said, don't have to show them what the adult way. We can show them just by giving them pictures and explaining piece by piece what's going on, and and they will know. When trust me, I had also very much travel to schools and speak with kids, and the questions I get from the kids from all the way to eight years to fifteen years old, they are they're asking very adult questions in the classrooms. Like to me personally. So I think that as an artist, you have to remember to be honest with kids as you're being honest with all the audience. Like you, if you lie to your audience or you're trying to mask something, they will know. But, but also try to remember that it's children you're having a show for. <laughs> so if you can yeah. do both of those things, it's, it's great, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a certain boundaries or yeah. you kind of clean up your work. Like I agree that, like, you know, mm. you know, you're doing it for kids and you know, the mm. Uh, the message you want them to uh, you're trying to get across or what you want them to understand you kind of have to systematically get there and also you need to entertain them because they're children also if they're not yeah. they're not really going to listen to what you're trying to say anyway but uh <laughs> <laughs> you have to find a balance <laughs> maybe now so they will listen but in their way <laughs> <laughs> it's not entertaining i'm not gonna listen <laughs> Yeah, you end up hearing them talk or some of them leaving or, you know. Exactly. You know, find a balance. <laughs> you know, completely. And I, no, think, I think, yeah, sorry. So nice with that. Sorry, <laughs> did that. Go oh. ahead. I, I go ahead. <laughs> uh, and I think it's so uh, nice, uh, as you say, Sebastian and Nasser, uh, with the Q&A afterwards. And in that, you also get really kind of busted if you if you haven't done a real job. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you get questions about everything. So that uh, I think you should take the world uh, work serious 
uh, and uh, kind of anyway. But uh, this Q and A is like always every day a good test if you if you're in your if you're in your own theme if that makes sense if you're like mm. grounded in it uh, or and have had have, have done a thorough job. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> No, I would, I would, of course, I would like to also add my voice to this uh, conversation here in, because now we are speaking with you, Catherine, uh, and uh, Norway actually is one of the few countries where you have so much like performance art uh, on offer for the schools, for the younger audience. In many, many countries, you will not have this quality of performance art for younger audience because you will not even have that quality of performance art in uh, bigger theaters because, because the way the societies are like prioritizing like where should the funding should be going culture should it be go to the contemporary art or should it be go to the classical art because in many many countries like in continents also you also have classical backgrounds which or traditions which also need to be taken care of. so there's there's much more going on so i think when you when you talk about like like the, the boundaries of understanding i think it is expanding every day the mm -hmm. younger audience is expanding every day and i i feel sometimes that they are actually much more in future than we are. Uh -huh. Somehow, I think I carry experience of 40 years of and also something from past, but they are actually looking into future constantly. And they are born in a time when the phone and all this technology was there. So sometimes I feel they are actually changing every day and we need to kind of understand that and we need to understand there I really want to come back to this idea which Anna was mentioning, this responsibility like yeah. taking the responsibility of the younger audience and, and, and we can laugh with them, we can create entertaining things with them, but do understand that they are, for me, they are really, I do not treat them as a different audience than a adult audience or a mature audience on a theater. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it is really about this human understanding of where we are and mm -hmm. how do we understand life and people around us. And I think that is, and, and I think then everything falls in a, in a way that of course, things also, and I'm also not afraid to give them boring things. And I think, I think being bored is one of the most important things to confront it with. Mm -hmm. So I like to confront the younger audience with that also sometimes, and, but also try to understand that imagination have unlimited kind of uh, capacity. When you are bored, you can create things in your imagination. And I think that's where the creativity starts. So I think for, um, I think it is very exciting to work with the younger audience and to be challenged by them, I think. Certainly as a presenter, when I have the um, honor of sitting in the audience and watching um, artists like yourselves presenting your beautiful work, it is such a joy to uh, watch the children. I, often I've seen the show more than once, so then I actually sometimes just sit at the back and just pay attention to what's going on in the room with the children. And they'll have their little conversations with each other explain what well, often one child trying to explain to the other what they're seeing on stage and what it means and it's just fantastic to listen to them as one of them's like well no it's this and then, and then it's this and and neither of them are wrong it is what that's their experience and it just speaks to me to the caliber of work on stage because the children are so engaged that they actually want to check in with each other about what they're witnessing and understanding and then the questions as you've all uh, expressed coming out of the Q&A, often have me in tears because they're so incredibly smart and thoughtful and then sometimes just funny and interesting. How old are you? How did you meet? What made you do this work, right? Which are all interesting questions, but then there's always that, that really special question that really gets into the depth of the work that everybody witnessed on stage. Uh, so it's wonderful to hear you talk about the importance of the young audience, because I agree with everything you're saying, having um, witnessed many young audiences um, getting to see fantastic work on stage. And I think personally, some of the best work in the world is created for young audiences. That's certainly my experience out there. Um, so that's, and it's wonderful to hear your respect for them, because I think sometimes people think artists just throw it together for young people and that's not at all what we do and what you do and not what I'm hearing. So that's exciting to hear. I'm curious to know how COVID has impacted your work and your, in terms of the last nine months and 
Uh, I understand some theaters in Norway outside of Oslo are still open for play and uh, but within Oslo like like here in Canada at the moment we've been closed down so curious about your thoughts whether it's been an opportunity to be more creative or whether it, it's been an, um, that's been the opposite uh, yes um uh, yeah this is this is this boat we all are in right now this mm -hmm. COVID boat uh, for me personally uh, it was very frustrating but then looking at okay i really wanted to still do like live performances and try to put my emphasis on live performances and because it's so much the digital of everything on on offer and and i think it is very hard to compete with netflix I yeah. personally watch Netflix too. <laughs> <laughs> so during the COVID, uh, we decided to make a performance where we could try to still do the performance and people can watch it within their cars, for example, like a drive-in performance. And okay. we tried to not make it too, um, because if I would do it without COVID, I think I will make a very deep, as I said in the beginning, very deep research, two years of work and really heavy, put too many things. This time I said like, okay, let's, let's, strip everything down, what it is about. It's about body and, and human beings. So then we perform in an old house and audience are watching it from within their cars through the window. And then we have a projection of moon. And I try to make it very simple in the way and but still not lose the intensity and the, how do you say in English, um, the soul of the work in a way. So try to simplify. I think it gave, gave, uh, gave me an idea of like how simple could we become and how much less we need sometimes to work and we can still manage to communicate. Uh, but still a lot of uncertainty hangs around and, and still trying to balance like, again, we come back to this idea, what we can do, how, how and also trying to now thinking of the hybrid performances so that I'm now working with a company in India now so they can perform my work in India without me traveling there. So they have a local dancers working for the local community. So I think a lot of these things are coming out because of because of COVID. So I think it has made us uh, reflect more. Right. And almost I will say, I will arrest myself that it's a bit sad that we have to come to that place to be able to reflect like this. We could have done it before uh, for the sake of environment. But I think um, I must criticize myself that I'm also a part of a consumer society. And I'm, I, I, I've ha I have a hard time cutting my, my needs down, I think. But this is the right time to talk about it also. Mm. I think that's uh, uh, such an important thing that we see these days is that local um, that the local community starts to become more and more important. At least that's our experience in the last year. So uh, we were lucky actually that we before COVID came, we decided to do a series of solos uh, for 2020. So that was pure luck. <laughs> So it meant that we could actually carry out the production period uh, without uh, problems actually in the spring. Um, but what we've also done is to create promenade shows out, outdoors with these solos. And uh, done that in local communities where we've done local projects in advance and then invite them to the promenade shows. And that's been so heartwarming to see people come out uh, into the forests or in along the river front um, to just enjoy art again after being in a bit of a lockdown um, and also within the lockdown being able to enjoy art live it's been so rewarding actually so we've been lucky in a sense uh, but it's been great because we've been able to see how important the local is or just reinforce that in ourselves because we kind of knew but it's just to see it again get the proof again and just, uh, so we wanna keep doing this. So next year, we're gonna do a series of, of promenade shows along the Oslo Fjord. Uh, so we, yeah, I think this whole process, like you were saying, Sudesh has talked to something and that's the positive side of things. But of course we feel restricted and um, it's such a shame all the international touring that we couldn't do. Um, and also with Sadesh, also with the environmental questions, it might be a good thing. But on the other hand, I, I think also it is still important to stay international within the arts. Um, so, so, yeah, there's a, a bit of pros and cons. There are some positive things and we try to focus on the positive things. But we're hoping to be able to travel again because <laughs> I think it's important with, the, uh, with artistic exchange and to also hear each other's voices. Um, 
yeah, I think that's important for democracy, really. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm I'm, oh, yeah, sorry, go first, Anna. No, Sebastian. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, I miss the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I really miss, I'm, I just be miss doing it, you know, like basically like going to schools. I miss the children. I miss, I miss the audience. I'm, I miss it. But I mean, that's an ed egocentric thought, but I hope they miss me too. But I mean, the thing is, we've all my grandmother has gone through worse i mean history like covid is a thing we all have to go through and it's shit but we we have to go through it and we'll we 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 will get out on the other side and continue to do what we do uh, and yeah hopefully we can take this time and this and and just make something good good out of it later yeah mm. absolutely uh, but this is yeah it's been uh, it's been tough it's gonna happen sudden you know but uh yeah i've been a little bit getting obsessed with digital work working digital with, <laughs> working with cameras and stuff so i kind of just moved my my living room and turned into a little studio kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so it's been like, a lot of improvisation a lot of Filming, a lot of clipping, going through all, I kind of just turned the stage into where I am at the moment, where I'm locked down at. That's where the work is. <laughs> In the old times, they used to say whole world is a stage, but now the home is stage. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is home. Make space. <laughs> Make space. You never know, maybe later on, I'm sure I'm going to use the material. Just right. gonna keep working in that sense and just I'm kind of developing another digital way of kind of working and just storing like material and ideas. Just when 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 it opens up again, then at least I know I'll have a lot somewhere to start from. <laughs> some some developed stuff to work on. Yeah. Great. Yes. Good. Yeah, uh, we, I, I feel that we have been really lucky in this because uh, uh, it, um, uh, almost as Anna said, we, uh, we produced in, uh, in February, February uh, a monologue, which I play in, which is the production we play now. So actually from the start of September, we could go out and uh, do this uh, school performances uh, around in, the, in, uh, in Norway. So um, I feel really lucky that I had that opportunity uh, to actually start to work very early. Um, and um, I, re I recognize a lot of the things that said here. And I think that uh, just the hunger I felt, even though it was kind of a normal pass, uh, which could have been in every other year, uh, I, this this need for playing when I started up in September was just very um, awakening for me uh, uh, to to um, uh, to feel in my really in my body how I want to do this and pre present this material as and as Sebastian said to how you miss this arena and this Q and A's and these meetings, uh, like a really source in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, it was. Uh, I feel really lucky. But in the in the um, um, time between there, I I also had the time to kind of start to uh, um, um, uh, go into things that I haven't done before, like writing. Uh, and I haven't. Me and my company has. Uh, hasn't kind of done, gone into this digital uh, thing because we it's it's just not our strength uh, so we were kind of searching other places and one of those places has to be been to kind of start to write and and use this slow time to to because the last years have been going like really 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 fast and to go into this slow uh, and I think I think uh, as Sudesh was into kind of if this can be a new tempo it I think it's so good for us both in consuming and everything <laughs> kind of mindfulness everything so 
uh, I have been trying to embrace this and embrace in that sense also new ideas and new uh, Im uh, impulses that the, I have the capacity to embrace now that things are a bit more calm. Yeah. Great, thank you. Well, our time is coming to a close. Uh, thank you for all your thoughts. I'm just wondering if anybody has anything that they'd really like to share. We, we have a few more minutes just before we end our conversation. So if there's anything that's burning that you would like to share. The fun fact, did you, did you know that Shakespeare, during Shakespeare's time, there were four, um, four pandemics in London. Oh, so wow. Uh, or three or four so they had to close down and then open again and I think it was the regular thing that closed down for three months and then <laughs> it was open again so it's happened before <laughs> we can survive it <laughs> good to know that's awesome <laughs> now I know why Shakespeare is so relevant in every time <laughs> in every culture he's been followed and rewritten and redone every time now I know why <laughs> Went through everything, huh? Eh? And you yeah. wrote about it. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Anyone else? No, I think I would just like to say thank you for uh, for this discussion. This was really it. What helps now in these days actually to talk together. That's the best thing. That's the best therapy. To speak yeah. your heart, to speak your mind, and have time for it. I think. So I really want to say thank you to all of you. It was so amazing to listen to all of you and to speak together about it. Mm, mm. I agree. Yeah. And also one of the inspiring things that I've thought uh, a bit about the, the last um, time is also this, uh, a lot of um, people who work with, with um, uh, theater or um, a stage art for a young audience. Also, often, more often I have the, I, I haven't done research on this, but I, I get the feeling that it's also the people who make the performance who play it and, and kind of, uh, I don't know if, if you all agree, but this also this, I think this, this uh, circle of being in contact with your audience all the time. And I, I, think, I think it would be, we would make more relevant theater if we could kind of uh, put this also into other um, areas, because I think it's a, it's a beautiful circle that, that kind of um, people who uh, actually make the piece or make the work in, in whatever also are the people who are sitting and answering Q and A and, and, and meeting um, the energy and, and know that we have to be relevant because young children, they, cr they crave re relevancy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they demand it, I mean, demand it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure to have this conversation with you. I've learned so much and I'm so happy that um, our young audiences out there have artists like yourselves who bring them such dynamic work and are so thoughtful within the work and also recognize that our children also like to have some fun inside of that work or the importance of sometimes being bored. All of the things from one end to the, uh, the other of the spectrum. So Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Don't go anywhere. I think. Um, hang on, we got a note. Yes, there we go. <laughs> you were just taking a moment. <laughs> Good job. Good job. So nice. Um, touring artist is democracy. Yes, that's the statement I'm taking from this. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So travel more. Huh? Travel more. That's, you know, someone else can stop traveling. We have to travel more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the artist. The artist yeah. to travel. Yes. Yeah. Those damn That's politicians cool. should just stay in their office and go yeah. on Zoom and stay in Zoom and we <laughs> exactly. can travel. They yeah. don't need to be traveling. I it's agree. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that uh, I, on this talk show, I don't know if you know Life Over Ansnes is a uh, world famous um, uh, musician and he mm. travels a lot and he was on this talk show and he was talking in shame about his travels uh, because part of the discussion was environmental um, policies and and then this woman who's one of the head uh, one of the heads of one of the most important environmental organizations in Norway just stopped him and said you know I think you should travel more 
but there because you make sure that people have the right priorities. <laughs> I yeah. think that's very yeah. nice. That's true. I, I, yes. Uh, and Christina knows all about it because where she lives, she needs Vidra, which is a small yeah. plane with propellers. And, you know, they just need to make them electric and then we can just travel more. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should make the initiative and make that little one. <laughs> that one. Go for it. <laughs> Exactly. But thank you, Catherine. It was really nice to have you lead on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Everybody, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much for being uh, yeah. taking your time. And next year, I will meet you all in person. Right? Yes. 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 Yes, yes you probably. will. Yeah. <laughs> <Here. Yes. laughs> uh, Lovely. It's great mm -hmm. that Showbox is putting on these uh, these digital platforms. I think, it's very yeah. Nice. Like yeah. Sudesh was saying, it's really nice to just see people in the community again. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have to try to keep some of the the core and the soul of Showbox alive throughout the next weeks. Yeah. Well, and the com these conversations are so so important, and there's something we can still have, even if it's through a screen, right? The yeah. Yes, thank you for doing this. It's, um, yeah, it's just very important. Mm -hmm.